Please state your name for the record. Uh, Leonard Joseph Fournette the third. Mr. Fournette, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Nothing but the truth. Great. So, tell us, tell us Leonard Fournette's story. Where are you from? Uh, from New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, went to my high school, went to a St. Augustine, um, Purple Night 2600, and college I went to was LSU. Okay, you know, I went to Alabama, so yeah. don't hate me. You, you, got, you, you got the best of You did, it's cool, you did. Man. It's cool. So, we're good. Yeah. So, um, we're here because of the March tomorrow, yeah. the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, what was, you know, tell us about growing up black uh, in Louisiana or just, just generally in the United States? Uh, I mean, Louisiana is different for me. Uh, I went to all boys black school, Catholic black school, high school. Uh, you know, we played football, basketball, you know, the, the normal things like that. And uh, <clears throat> this is going back, you know, it's, it's always been hard, it's always been different. You know, I can remember when I was younger, uh, in my neighborhood, my dad was just stole from me one time. And uh, I was telling him to hurry up or whatever. He probably don't remember, but I remember this too. He was coming from the store and uh, he was running towards me and the police thought he was running from there or whatever the case may be. And uh, they asked him, I think they had him probably like 30 minutes or whatever, and asked him what he was running from. I remember the whole thing, you know, when I was a kid, I was like probably like seven, six years old. So it's something we've been going through uh, most of our time lives. And, you know, we talked about it over the, over, the, over the FaceTime about, you know, the talk in the white community is about the birds and the bees, right? Yeah. So, so the, the, it makes parents nervous to have to have that talk. What's the talk about in, in the black community? Uh, it's, it's nervous for me and a lot, a lot a lot of people too. That's my that's my color. You know what I mean? Because I have kids. Uh, I don't want this this situation to go on any longer. You know, I don't have to work for my kids going out. You know, they're gonna have a good time. They never gonna get pulled over. Might get shot, killed, or whatever. So that's why that's why this protest is here right now, and that's why I wanted to do it. Just to to let uh, people on the other side just to understand that. It's bigger than the nailing, you know, it's bigger than everything that's going on right now. You know, it's about just having uh, equal rights. So, for years, you know, sometimes people would say Black Lives Matter and other people would yell back at them, All Lives Matter. But, but why doesn't that really make sense? What, 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 why do we need to add emphasis to, to, to Black Lives Matter? Uh, because I think sometimes, you know, uh, like I say, like it's like my guy, my guy made a song called The Other Side. You know, we know a certain life, just like they know a certain life. You know, they don't, it's come from two, two different backgrounds, you know what I mean? Like, some, I, some people grew up in the suburbs, you know, I grew up in the hood. <laughs> you know what I mean? So a lot of things with police brutality, we, I've been seeing that since I was young. You know, and a lot of people don't grow up seeing that. You know, so I've witnessed it since a child, you know, I've been seeing it going on for years and years. So. You know, uh, I just think sometimes, you know, I think it's the time for right now for everybody to stand up for what they believe in. Why is it important for you, Leonard Fournette, to lend your voice and do a march? Uh, it's very important. You know, I have a platform, uh, one of the most likely faces also in the NFL too. And uh, especially out here in Duval, the team I play with Jacksonville, I think it's pretty big. You know, uh, like I said, if you don't stand up for nothing, you don't fall for anything, <laughs> to be honest. You know, and that's my biggest thing right now. I just want to, uh, instead of, Instead of talking about it, I just want to do more. You know what I mean? I think that's what action needs to be taken each and every day until you know, we feel like it could be changed. Okay. So what do you have planned for tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow we'll get together at uh, 10 a.m. It's going to be the protest. By the time we're going to start, uh, I think uh, Lil Duval's going to be there. We have a lot of guys coming in right now. And uh, it's going to be something special, you know, to see both sides of the community come together and protest. And also, you can hear our stories, uh, what we have to say, uh, and, and how we're feeling. I feel it's the whole situation with George Floyd too. So it's going to be big. You know, I think it's good for the community, also for the city. So you, when we were talking, we talked about victims, yeah. people that had seen this firsthand. And I know uh, Greg Hill's family is coming. He yeah. was shot through a closed garage door yeah. uh, after police were on, on his property for 60 seconds because of a loud music complaint. And Jordan Davis was killed here locally, uh, not by a police officer, but... <coughs> but as a result of, of just racist <clears throat> actions. What does it mean to have, to be able to walk with victims? Uh, it means a lot, you know, I can, I can be the, the, that voice for those guys who didn't, who didn't make it, you know what I mean? Uh, who didn't, who couldn't share their story either. You know, I, I can be that platform for them and understand, you know, they have someone like me who their story's gonna look through. You know, I'm a young black man myself, you know, so I think it's, it's, it's my destiny, or my destiny, you know, to, 
to lead by example. You know, I have kids, I have sons, you know what I mean? And uh, just be the best man I could be. Let's talk about your kids. Yeah. Uh, how old? Uh, three. Three months, I have a four-year-old, I have a five-year-old. Okay. What, what's it like? What's it like? And, you know, maybe their upbringing is a little different than your bring, upbringing, but on the same token, it's, it's to some extent not. Um, but, but tell me about being a dad <clears throat> right now with what, all of what's going on. Uh, you scared. It's, it's scary. You know what I mean? Uh, especially in the world we, we're living in right now. And, um, uh, just trying to more you, more your kids to just to give them a better lifestyle, you know, but that's also, on the other hand, you know, they get pulled over, you know, and, uh, it's the, it's the brutal reality of it, you know, they get pulled over and it might, you don't know, you know, especially what's going on right now. It's crazy how, how everything's going on right now. You know what I mean? Like I said, I have, uh, sons and daughters, <laughs> you know, and, uh, the biggest thing for me, if, when I get a whistle down the line, uh, to ever get that call and be like, my child got shot. And, uh, just for no reason, you know, just for being black. You know what I mean? And I think that's the hardest thing nowadays to, that really, uh, pushes the motor for a lot of guys. You know, it's hard. It's hard seeing another person of my, my skin, my color, you know, uh, innocent victims get killed each and every day. Have you lost any friends or family members? No, nah, no. Nah, nah. But like I say, uh, we're family and by, by line, you know, George Floyd's family, you know, uh, Arkansas Sterling's family <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's hard, it's hard being a black man in America, you know, uh, especially if you come from a different background, you, you, you've been in prison, it's hard to get a job, you know, do the right thing to feed your family, you know, they look at all that. Awesome. struck by the moment um so how did how did how did tomorrow happen like how how was that set up uh so it's gonna, it's gonna happen uh actually it's so crazy uh when i brought the idea the mayor came to me automatically man you know he wrote me uh i always had his number he called me he's like man then i'm very i want to do it with you you know because i think he gets it you know for number one you know he, he's been around he's come around a football team for the last three years that i've, I've been here you know, his kids love me, his daughters, sons, things like that. And, uh, we kind of grew, we kind of grew to be family, uh, becoming a family too, you know. And, uh, then I reached out to a lot of other guys, uh, Lil Duval, DJ Shell, a lot of the, the main faces that's from here, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not from here, you know what I mean? I've met a lot of those guys in my last three years here, you know, so why not? get those faces, you know, that's from here, who's, who's gone through it before I got there, and uh, just to get them out there to come watch with us. How's Jacksonville been for you? It's been good. It's been good for me, the people. Uh, it's everything, you know, I, I love it here. So th that brings me to, to some level of, of football mm -hmm. in the NFL draft. Yeah. Um, and and I, I try to put myself in your shoes during the draft when they were talking about trading and and kind of you know getting rid of Leonard Fournette like yeah. a like a like a tangible item. Yeah. What's that like? Uh like I said, uh, over, over the years I understand it's a business. You know, at the end of the day, you know, there's no hard feelings. Uh but my job is to always make sure I'm ready. You know, I have another season here in Jacksonville. You know, give give everyone out here my all. You know, uh, like I said, I love this game, I love football, I love my teammates. You know, even the new guys who came in, you know, I can't wait to meet them after this Corona stuff goes away. You know, so I'm just looking forward to the season. You know, I've been working hard, uh, busting my tail, uh, just getting better, stronger, and faster. How's how's off season condition been going? Uh, it's cool. Uh, I've been training in the facility. You know, me and my uh, me and my trainer Morgan Wells have been getting in uh, each and every day. You know, no days off. And uh, I think today's been my um, probably my only off day in like three months. You know, so I came in and just just do the protest, and I'm gonna fly back to Dallas and start like training again. Okay. Uh, what kind of message would you send to fans? So fans don't know, and I guess players don't even know what the <coughs> rules are going to be mm -hmm. for for people coming to the stadium, yeah. and COVID, and all that stuff. But what's your message to to Jaguars fans about about the 2020 season? Uh, well, we've been on Zoom calls every day, you know, and they haven't came up with a final uh, solution for it. But hopefully, uh, 
the fans get to come to the games, you know, because as, as players, we're nothing without them. <laughs> you know, they bring the energy. Uh, they bring everything to our stadium. You know, uh, nobody doesn't, doesn't want to play in a, a stadium empty. You know, it's not for the fans. There's, there's, there's things that, that, so I'm a season ticket holder. You've, you've seen pictures of yeah. my kids. Like we, we, we're, we're Leonard Fournette fans. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I took a picture with you on the sidelines uh, in Charlotte. And you came up, and and it was like you were our best friend. Like you just <laughs> you're just such a good guy. Yeah. Um, and I don't think people know how often you you almost leave the stadium naked because you give away your jersey and yeah. your shoes and everything. How often do you give away your your, your stuff? Uh, every game, you know, I probably find a, a younger fan in the stands, and sometimes might be older. You know, because uh, I mean, you got to cherish those moments. You know what I mean? Like especially in the league. You know. Uh, Unfortunately, it's a young man's game. You know, we all getting older and older each and every year, second or whatever the case may be. And uh, I just want to impact people's lives. You know what I mean? Like I met a man yesterday in Dallas. Uh, I think he was a Tampa, a Tampa Bay fan or whatever the case may be. And he needed like twelve dollars to just catch the train to meet his mother. Cause I think his mother was sick, and he was showing his tattoos. He was like, "Man, you should sure do that guy Leonard Fournette." He's like, he's like, maybe I'm. He said, "Maybe I'm tripping." I'm like, "Yeah, my name is Leonard." You know what I mean? He's like, Fanatic, he's like, man, I always been a fan of you. But it's things like that, you know what I mean, that the football world has brought us to meet people and things like that, and it's, it's beautiful. It's great. What happened with the, so one of your, I think it was an early jersey, I could be wrong, but there was there was a rival fan that got a hold of one of your jerseys. What's that story? So. I think it was an Eagles fan. It was an yeah, Eagles, Eagles fan. Tell me about that story. He, he lied to me, actually. Like, I'm a big Finesse fan, you know, da, da, da. and I'm like, man, you got an Eagles jersey, I don't know if I should give you this, which I never should have gave it to him, right? And uh, next thing you know, uh, it was on eBay going for sale. Everybody on Twitter's like, man, he's selling your jersey, he shouldn't have gave it to him. So actually, a fan from Jacksonville brought the jersey back, right? And I signed it for him. And now uh, it's probably in his man cave or whatever the case may be. It is, and I tried to buy it from him and sell it. <laughs> I offered him more than what he paid. Yeah. But that's that, them's the breaks. I have a feeling I know a guy that can give me one if I want one. So, um, it, it, so, so it sounds like you love Jacksonville yeah. and you want to spend time in Jacksonville. Yeah. You want to have a contract in Jacksonville. Yeah, most definitely. What? Yeah. That's not what the, that's not what's being reported. Right? Yeah, but like I say, it's uh they also gonna twist it up, you know, put their own words on. Like that's that, that's just what it is, especially in this this sport we play, you know. So uh, we'll see coming into the season. It's business. Yeah, it's a business. Yeah, it's a business at the end of the day. Um, did you have any conversations? So so tell me about the the Zoom. So I I I know I know about like Dylan and Cap and some of those guys I'm friendly with. Yeah. Uh, how did all that happen? Uh, I think one day, uh, I think it started with Call of Duty. I put, I put a post on my, uh, my Twitter about Call of Duty and he was like, man, I play with you. It was like, man, we got, we on a Zoom call, a couple of fans want to talk to you. And I got on like three days straight just talking to him. So uh, actually, it went good. <laughs> so you did live commentary for Jags fans <laughs> during the draft. Yeah. Yeah, I did. And had fun and made, you know, made jokes and, and, and commented about our draft picks, like, who does that? I don't know, you know, that's just me. Yeah. I've always been like that. I love it. Um, going back to, you know, to some, some more serious stuff. Well, let me, let me, yeah, definitely going back to more serious stuff. Have, have you ever had a police encounter that was negative? Yeah. A lot, a lot of them, especially when they get pulled over, you know, they kind of talk to you crazy, you know what I mean? They tell you, show them your ID, and they're like, well, you learn from that. So they hope a perspective change after that. You know, I had plenty, I had plenty of them before, you know what I mean? So, uh, it, it just, uh, it, it, it wakes you up at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Uh, it wakes you up always, you know, and I always go back, I think about, you know, my cousins, you know, uncles, uh, my father, my brother, my sisters, you know, so like, so what if their names wasn't from that? You know, would you respect them or show them the same respect? Or you just think like that would go through my mind. Right. If you could change one or two things <clears throat> about, about Jacksonville, mm -hmm. what would you change? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know too much about Jacksonville. You know, I've been three years now, going on my fourth year. You know, the people's, uh, like I said, they've always been great to me. You know, but the one I change, I think, uh, the black and white community. Should be closer. 
than what it is. You know, uh, it's understanding both sides. You know. So you're gonna be at City Hall. Yeah. Are you familiar? Have you ever been to City Hall? No. Nah. Okay. Right across the street. They say the park, right? Right across the street's a park. Yeah. It's called Hemming Plaza. Mm -hmm. There's a big statue in Hemming Plaza that's a Civil War monument. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Um, what's your take on something like that? Like, should, should we, should we, should we have Civil War monuments in our in our principal park in Jacksonville, Florida? Mm, see, that's tough, you know what I mean? Uh, not if they're not living by it, you know what I mean? Not if they're not doing the right thing by it. You know, if not, they should be taken down to the yeah. end. And, and, and that's, that's, some of the, that's some of the talk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, po politicians tend to say the things to remain politicians, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, it's tough. So, so Jacksonville has a, about a 30% African-American population. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very diverse, very rich. Yeah. Um, and then during consolidation, they, they consolidated the whole county into one big city, yeah. promising representation for all the little cities. That's why you, 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 you have kind of pockets here instead of you know, one big city. Uh, but it's, it's a beautifully rich town. Um, and, and I know you've, I believe you've, you've visited the north side and I think even donated some, some gym equipment. Yeah. Uh, Tell us about that. Yeah, so... Uh, Man, I forgot what the name of the high school was. Yeah. So Rebo or Reigns? Reigns, Reigns High School. So uh, I mailed a 900, I think like 2,000 of my trophies. You know what I mean? And like built a, built them a brand new weight room. Uh, got them some equipment to lift and stuff. And actually, it's so crazy. They wound up winning the state championship too. That same year. <laughs> you know, so uh, like I said, man, I always give it back because I came from that environment. You know, I, I, grew, I was brought up in that. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of guys didn't come back and give it to us. You know, that's just, that's just the way, I don't know, that's how it was. So that's why I said this generation, I feel like uh, we have a lot of voices. A lot of guys are going to step up, use their platform right. And also going to speak, speak for what they, they think that, that should be right at the end of the day. So, so, so what's next? So, so people come to the protest. We all march together. Uh, what, would, what would you hope for after that? Man, hopefully it's changed their mind. I just watched a movie last night with just, called Just Mercy. Uh, it's a great movie. I never heard it go. I think it's Mercy or Mercury. I think it's just Mercy though. And uh, it's about a guy in Alabama. He changed his mind about uh, giving a death sentence to someone in jail. You know, uh, just show him he was lying. You know, uh, those false statements they made on him, things like that. And uh, hopefully, I just want this protest to change God's mind, even if you are racist uh, on racism. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's not right. Kind of, it's a. Uh, it's, it's just, it's not a good look at the end of the day, to be honest. So give us, so you speaking tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. You, you got, you got your words yeah. written or memorized? Yeah, I got a couple, yeah. Give, give us a preview. Oh, uh, no, nah, this really is going to be talking about the racism, you know, between, uh, the difference between blacks and whites, because it's, it's a lot of uh, things that have been going on, to be honest. You know, especially with some athletes been saying things, you know, and people just, uh, not, not agreeing or disagreeing with some things a lot of athletes say. You know, but at the end of the day, uh, like I said, it's always the other side. <laughs> like, unfortunately, uh, I've been on both sides now, you know, uh, not having money to have the money, you know, so I know how I feel from both sides. Uh, the Jaguars did a march today from this, or not today, but this week from the stadium yeah. um, to the jail. Um, what, how does it feel to have an organization um, do that, particularly when most others in the NFL haven't been so full -throat. Oh, it's incredible, man, to have, uh, especially the owner, like, Mr. Khan, <laughs> you know what I mean? Also, a head coach, like, Coach Doug, you know, uh, they was kind of upset about the whole thing what happened, you know, immediately uh, during the Zoom call, our team meeting, he kind of held it, you know, he wanted all the players to see how, they, see how we felt on the whole situation, talk about it, and uh, they're 100% with us, like, even, even in 2017, when we nailed you know, I, I own probably one of the only guys who live with us too. You know, so a hundred percent he's behind us, and uh, I love what he's doing. Let's talk about that. So, he, he, Jacksonville's a big military town, yeah. beautiful military yeah. town, and it, it did seem that, that people were getting 
confused about kneeling and whether that was disrespecting the flag or sending a message. Yeah. Explain that. Explain what it really was about. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sending a message. It's, it's never a flag. I have family in the military too, myself. You know, so it's never about disrespecting the flag. It's just we want our rights. You know, we want people to to respect us, you know, our color, you know, because like I said, it's hard, it's hard being a black man at the end of the day, it's, it's tough, you know, uh, that's just like when I seen the thing with uh, LeBron, you know what I mean, it's, it, some ladies told him shut up and dribble, you know, and they said another comment about somebody, uh, what well, he has, he has a right to say what he want, I mean, we all do, so I'm not, it's, it's not, it's not one side of the story, it has to be equal for both sides. Your friends, I'm going to lean on them. They got any questions? He's sworn to tell the truth. So. <laughs> Anybody? What, there we go. What, what can we do um, as suburban, as suburban as white kids? Yeah. As on the die hard LSU fans that have loved you, you know, forever. Yeah, I mean, and, don't, and don't feel that way in our heart. Yeah, How yeah, can yeah, I express yeah, that yeah. in yeah. more yeah. than what I can? What is the action that we can well, right? do? Uh, I think the action is. You know, like I said, it's always been different, but just just listen to us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you got you got people who who was brought up that way. You know, fortunately they're stuck in their ways. Uh, they're not gonna listen. But just have an ear and a heart for this whole circumstance because it's, it's bigger than football. It's bigger than kneeling. You know, it, this goes back a hundred years since then. You know, and uh, finally you have a, a couple of athletes, guys, uh, young men, grown men, that have a voice. And they're using it in a positive and in the right way. Beautiful. Anything else? One other thing. I keep hearing um, silence is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that completely right now. Yeah. And um, I know people that I've known for years that I've seen their social media pages and they're silent. Yeah. And so I think that's one of the ways that we were able to help out is bring, bringing the voice. What do you have to say to that? And now more than ever, speaking up and actually like, actions speak louder than words, but using whatever platform. Yeah, uh, most definitely, I think it's, it's, it's the right way to speak up right now. Because, you know, uh, when y'all have kids, you don't want your kids thinking racism, right? Because mm -hmm. y'all 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 was brought up that way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, uh, it, it hits different, especially when you have kids too, you know what I mean? Being a black father. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've witnessed it with my father, you know, uh, it's even, it's even my situation in Jacksonville when I got arrested. You know what I mean? Uh, they had a lot of police officers, eight police officers calls out the helicopter. You know, he thought he was thought I killed someone. <laughs> you know, it was crazy. But uh, like I said, even that reflects on like, when my child asked me, Dad, you got arrested, uh, this, that, that. Like, it hit you different. You know what I mean? So I want to make sure I be that change for this generation, even for my kids' generation, that oh, my dad taught me right from wrong. My dad taught me, was was not to be racist or was racism is, you know what I mean? Like you have to teach your kids that because you instill the wrong things in them, they're gonna think it's right. No matter no matter what you say or how much you preach them. People know their bubble. You know, yeah. And if you if you don't expand them to a bubble that has love in it and has equality in it, they're, they're, they're gonna be stuck in that bubble. Yeah. Um let's let's talk about that. I, I, I remember that day and reporters were kind of poking in and, yeah. and helicopters were news helicopters were flying. Yeah. I mean, it, you guys are under such a microscope. Um, what's that like? Like, like e e e e going out to eat, you know, just how does it affect your life being, you know, a, a, a star NFL running back? Uh, it, it doesn't affect my life at all. You know, I've been, uh, fortunately, I've been dealing with this since I was in eighth grade. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've been dealing with this since eighth grade, you know, uh, under, my, under my school, not being doing things as much as I can. but. And uh, I, I've never been a troublemaker. I've never gotten in trouble. I'm not in trouble in college or high school, nothing like that, things like that. So, like I said, uh, unfortunately, it's a, uh, an event that happened, you know. Like I said, nobody's life's perfect. We all go through things. It's going to be bumping roads on our lives. You know, like I said, I'm only 25. You know, I got years to come, years to live. You know what I mean? So, uh, it just happened. So, tell me tell me about your shirt and what it means. You can read it. What is it? It's a beautiful day to be black. So, my actually, my girl gave it to me, you know. She's there, she's right there behind the camera. I wish I could put it in the camera, she's right there. She gave me the shirt, though. Actually, she DM'd me, too. Uh, actually, uh, Lena, I would like you to support my shirt, this, that. And uh, and like like I said, it, it, it means everything. You know what I mean? Especially from a, a young black man like myself. And also, she's a black owner. 
You know, she's trying to get her things up and coming. Like I said, we had to talk about it too. And uh, it's, it's about that, man. It's about you get put in a certain situation to try to bring other people with you. You know what I mean? That's what it's about. And, and right now, I'm not talking about color. It could be black, white. It don't matter right now. It's just if we come together and we work together and to to end this this so-called racism, the world would be a lot better. Each one help one. Yes. Look right in this camera. Yeah. And and there's somebody sitting at home who just they just racism hasn't affected them because they've been comfortably in their bubble. Yeah. I want you to look at this camera and I want you to tell them why we need them to speak up and help. Yeah, uh, this is from that here and uh, want to end racism, period, man. Uh, need y'all voice, you know, y'all voice matters, uh, not just ours. Just because we have a platform doesn't mean y'all can't use y'all. So, you know, God uses everybody and the way he wants them to use it. So I want us to come together. I wish, I want to see everybody at the protest tomorrow for 10 a.m. Come out, man, just let, I want to see everybody out there supporting each other and uh, ending this, this whole racism thing. And uh, let's come together as a family. Was it fair? Fair. Anything else you want to say? No, I'm cool. Okay, man, I'm I good. appreciate it. Oh, yeah, most definitely. You can step down. <laughs>